Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Crystal and in today you're going to notice that I'm wearing a Design Bundles t-shirt. So if you guys did not know, I actually work for Design Bundles full time. I am their digital content creator and I have been for quite some time. So I feel like we have really ramped up and been working hard over there. So we have a lot of really cool things going on over on designbundles.net, as well as the YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram, all of the things. So if you're not already following Design Bundles uh, YouTube channel, make sure you guys click it. It's in the description below, so that way you guys can come check me out. So I post almost seven days a week over there. So you guys are gonna see all of the things from trending crafts to just some new stuff. So definitely make sure you guys go over there. We have tons of giveaways going on, and I'm gonna be giving away some stuff here on the channel today. So I'm super excited to be back over on my channel. And I thought, you know, I haven't been over here in quite some time. So I thought, let's do some trending crafts here. So we're gearing up, we're getting ready for Halloween. So let's go ahead and go in with the Halloween bundle from Design Bundles. So today I'm gonna be using the bundle, like I just said, but we're gonna be doing three trending crafts. So number one, we are going to be etching on a tumbler here using citrus strips. So once again, if you guys have not already seen this process, you're going to love this today. You can etch etch tumblers with your Cricut. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. We are also going to be creating a lava beer can glass. So we're gonna be doing that for Halloween. And then we are also going to be doing the direct to film hack with sublimation ink. So you guys do not wanna miss it. All right, so let's go over our supplies for our very first um, tutorial here. So we are going to be, like I said, etching on a tumbler. My favorite tumblers to etch on are actually the ones that are rubberized and not the ones that actually have the um that hard coating on it so what i really love is the rubberized ones like i said so bubba these ones right here are actually from walmart and i even snagged these for a dollar fifty on the clearance so definitely make sure you guys check out your walmart clearance if not i'm sure they still have some in stock i'll also try to link some that are similar down below but you could definitely do this with the powder coating as well so we have that and the most the main ingredient is actually citrus strip so you can actually find this locally and I'll also have it linked down below so citrus strip this is actually going to strip off of the tumbler here that rubberized or the powder coating to make it look etched we have some painters tape here I've got some gloves here we've got a little sponge today I'm going to be testing out using the dry this is the mr. clean sponge but you could definitely use something that has a little bit more like a Brillo pad a little bit more texture to help remove any excess so today we're going to test this one out got a little cup here to hold this and then we have our stencil so this is the design I'm using today so let's go ahead on over to designbundles.net and check out the bundle I'm using today all right, so now that we're over here on designbundles.net, this is the current Halloween craft bundle. So this is $241.59 worth of value here, and you're gonna get it for $19.99. So if you are just now starting out or whether you were a pro, this is the perfect um, Halloween bundle to get started this season. So just scrolling through here, you're gonna see there is stuff for t-shirts, sublimation, your crickets, your Glowforge, all of the things. So I really love this one right here. Here we could create a really fun um, door hanger, if you will. Um, scrolling right along, I really love these. There's actually two of them, and you can put these on a coffee mug as well as a t shirt. So you can see those examples here. So stinking cute. They've even got it on a little kid's one here. So if you guys actually even have a glow forge, this is a perfect one. So if you guys like to do the tiered trays like I do, you could put these on your table. Perfect for a tablescape, um, your kitchen counter, all of the things. So this is a perfect one to create this season with your glow forge. Moving right along, there's this bundle. This is the one I'm using today for our direct to film. So you can see inside of here, there is so many fun ones here. These are also perfect for coffee mugs, not just t-shirts, but these are gonna be perfect for those transfers. So I'm using this one right here. I just think they are so adorable. Moving right along, this next one right here is I'm actually using today as well. So you can actually use your Cricut if you want to, so you can cut this out with vinyl, or you can sublimate it. So today I'm actually going to be sublimate it. And you say, well, Crystal, this is a PNG. How can we cut this out with our Cricut? You can actually take this over. So instead of, see how the blood looks like 
is different colors, you can still cut this out with red vinyl. So just because it's a PNG does not mean you cannot take it over to your Cricut and cut it out. So you can still cut this out with vinyl. So if you guys want to see how to do something like that, definitely let me know. So we are going to be sublimating this on a beer can glass and then filling it with some fun liquid to make it look like a lava lamp with blood going through there. It's going to be a ton of fun. So like I said here, this is the bundle that we are using. And then you can see inside of here, there's these bundles. And from there, I grabbed an SVG and I created the stencil that we are using today. So like I said, definitely make sure you guys check it out. All right, so I'm so excited. I'm actually gonna give away this entire bundle to one lucky crafter. So if you guys are watching us during the premiere, so I'm actually live right now in the comments during the premiere, you guys can put hashtag Halloween, and at the very end, I will draw a winner, and then that winner can reach out to mail at designbundles.net, let them know that you're the winner, and then um, we will definitely get that over to your account right away. So once again, if you're watching the premiere right away, you have until the very end, use the hashtag Hashtag Halloween for a chance to win. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to our craft here. So let's go ahead. The very first thing that you want to do is go ahead and get your tumbler ready to go. I've already done that. And then now we're going to go ahead and apply this. So we want to get some transfer tape just as usual. And what I did with this is I actually removed the pieces we normally would put on. So say, for example, I'd weed out everything else and I would have applied his face to something. But I actually weeded out the opposite, which creates a stencil. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that transfer tape, like I was telling you guys. I'm gonna take some transfer tape and I'm just gonna go ahead and get it right on here. Now, it doesn't cover the whole thing and that's okay. As long as it is covering all of those open spaces. So we're gonna go ahead and rub this down, just like so. All right, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and take my squeegee here. So this is gonna help me. See the little line there? I'm gonna lay it flat just like this. And then from here, I can go ahead and lay this down just like that. Now, depending on how you wanna do this, so I have the word Bubba up here. I could do the side, but it, it goes right through that wording. So I'm gonna go ahead and do mine upwards, just like this. You just wanna go ahead and line it up where you're wanting it to be. So I want something right about here. I'm gonna get that center first, and then I'll roll one side down and then the other. Now, whenever I went to cut this out, I left about an inch all the way around, so I really don't need to use the painter's tape. But if you need to, you can go ahead and add in some painter's tape around the sides. So I'll go ahead and show you guys. Your citrus strip is gonna slowly wanna move to the sides. So that is just going to protect the rest of your surface. So what we wanna do is really make sure everything is rubbed down very well. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take and remove that transfer tape. So just peeling out a quarter just like this. And there you have it. So you guys can see how stinking cute he's looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rub everything down. You just wanna make sure there is no bubbles for um, where you're working. So that way it doesn't get underneath anything else. Now, like I said, if you do need to add some tape, all you're simply gonna do is get some tape here and then you're just going to wrap it just like so. And like I said, this is just going to make sure that nothing gets on the rest of these surfaces you don't want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one on this side and then the other side. All right, so something just like this. Now I'm not gonna worry about the top because really it's gonna go all over the sides. So something like this looks good enough. So now we are ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a little medicine cup like this. Just make sure you're not going to reuse this for the kiddos or anything like that. This is something separate for the crafts. And so we're gonna go ahead and just get a little bit of this down here because a little bit goes a long way. You don't really need very much. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. As you guys can see here, this is good enough. So we are ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and take the foam here. Now, if you feel like you're gonna be touching any of this, you can go ahead and put those gloves on now, but I save those for whenever I go to wash everything off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take some just like this, and we're just gonna go ahead and dab. You don't wanna paint it on, you wanna kinda of dab it on. This is going to prevent it from going underneath. So we're just going to make sure everything is covered. Now, whenever you're doing this, depending on your area, it could take you, you know, as little as 10 minutes or up to 30 minutes, maybe even an hour. So every area is going to be different and every season. So for example, it may go faster in the summertime for you because of the heat, and then it may be slower for you guys in the winter time. So don't get discouraged, just give it a little bit more time. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Now I have seen that you can also speed it up by putting some tin foil on top and then heating it up as well. So you can also do that if you need to. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this on here. And then I'm going to set it aside and we're going to move on to the rest of our crafts. So that way, by the time we're done with everything else, this guy should be ready to go. Now, what I like to do during this process, so say for example, this is the only crafts you're working on, you're doing several of them. What you wanna do during that process, say for example, I'm gonna leave mine for 30 minutes, is I'll go by, you see how this is already starting to slide down? I'll come over here and I'll swipe those sides just to make sure that it's not gonna go down. And you can wait till it kinda gets down around here. You just wanna check those and make sure it's not gonna drip all the way down to an area that doesn't have any. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy out of the way and we're gonna work on our next craft. All right, so we are ready for craft number two. So right now trending are these beer glasses that are double walls. So you can actually see there is a hole here to where you can fill and you can do snow globe uh, with glitter and all of the things or you can actually do something like this too. You could fill these with glow in the dark stuff. There is, the possibilities are endless, but either way, these are trending. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove our lid and straw right away. And then we're gonna go ahead and clean our glass. Now, in the meantime, I have my tumbler press at 356, I believe, 356, 359 for 140 seconds. So we're gonna bring down that temp, bring up that time to get the perfect press for our glass. So we're gonna go ahead and remove any sort of fingerprints and debris. So you want to sublimate these glass tumblers first. And also, for one, make sure that they are sublimatable. I do have link below the ones that I'm using today. So all of the supplies today, I do have link below. But what you're gonna be able to do, once again, is sublimate. So if they are not sublimatable, you could definitely apply the vinyl. So with this, like I said, I am using the Craft Express one here today. I'll have it linked down below for you guys. Um, another one that we also use and recommend is Heat Press Nation. I'll have theirs linked below. And they've actually launched a new one um, for their craft line. So definitely make sure you guys check that out. And I do believe that they're possibly gonna be releasing that in a few colors. So I'll have that linked down below as well. All right, so what I've got here is some heat tape. I've got um, this right here. So this is our print already ready to go. I printed it out with my Sawgrass SG500. Got a couple pieces of tape. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and wrap this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure, since this is a full wrap, I'm going to make sure that we line everything up so it looks perfect. All right, so now that I have that lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the pieces of tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get a longer one here, and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that, or put that right down here. So that is perfect. I don't need to wrap this with anything else. This is perfect to go. So once this is fully heated up, we're ready. So we're going to be pressing, um, like I said, around 356 for 140 seconds. And once we uh, press it once, we're gonna actually press it again. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna rotate this where my tape is over a little bit. And I've already, before you turn this on, make sure that you adjust your pressure. So you don't wanna be trying to adjust that pressure once it's hot because you're gonna heat up that glass. So you just adjust that first. Once you have that down, go ahead and turn it on. And I would really back it up if you've been working on tumblers because you don't wanna crack that glass. And if you need to, the way that I do it is tug. So whenever I go to tighten it up, if I can pull it out, it needs a little bit more and so on and so forth. You should not be having to push that super hard close. It should very gently close. All right, so we are getting down to those last six seconds here. We're gonna go ahead and put on our heat gloves. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up very carefully. And then we're gonna rotate this. So I'm gonna go ahead and very gently rotate it enough to where I can press it again and it's going to get the um, remaining side that didn't get. Because the way a tumbler press is, there's a little gap on the top that is not getting sublimated. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this out. Now, normally I would put this on my granite and cool it down, but when you're working with glass, you really don't want to do that. So you don't want to rush it. So I've got it on a um, heat pad here, and then we're going to go ahead and just quickly remove our tape and our paper. All right, so we're going to go ahead and flip this around so you guys can see how awesome that came out. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this up so you guys can see how cool that looks. Now, when we have our solution in here and everything else, it's going to be amazing. So now what we're going to do is we are actually going to go ahead and set this aside, let it completely cool down. So while it's doing that, we can start working on our mixture that's going to go in the inside.
So let's go ahead and go over the supplies that we're using. So number one was our double walled beer glass, sublimatable beer glass. And then we've got some baby oil here, as well as some pure vegetable glycerin. I would recommend buying the bigger jugs of these. So these two right here is what's gonna make the magic happen. We are going to use more of the baby oil, less of this. So this is going to be our blood solution. And this is what's going to be um, the water, if you will, that just kind of keeps that mixing. And then we have some red food dye. I've got got um, this little bottle here just kind of helps put it in there. You could use condiment bottles um, or you could even use little syringes like this as well. So I've got a little medicine cup and I'm going to start to mix up some of this glycerin with the red food dye to create our blood if you will. Now a few more things that I do have is I have a UV lamp and then UV resin to seal this up with. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with that, um, with our faux blood, if you will. So we're gonna go ahead and squeeze in our glycerin. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this guy, I'm gonna say almost to the top. So you can add as much, little or as less as you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something about like that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our red food coloring here, just give us a few drops here until you're happy with it. And then you wanna get something to mix it around. So I'm actually just gonna use this little syringe here and I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this up. All right, so now I'm getting happy with the consistency and the color of this. It is looking so, so cool. So what we're gonna do is, we can, like I said, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna let this completely cool itself down. So we're gonna keep on going. I'm gonna fill this guy with some of that baby oil. So I'm gonna use this to put the baby oil and then I'm gonna use my syringe to get the blood in there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so while this is cooling down, let's go ahead and go back to the first craft. So you guys can hopefully see here, I'm gonna go in here and just clean this up just to make sure those sides are not going down there. So I can go ahead and do that as well. All right, so let me go ahead and show you the next step that you guys are gonna to wanna to make sure you're doing in between that 30 minutes. This is gonna also speed that time up super quick. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and take a weeding tool here and you're going to go in here and kind of scratch the surface, just very gently coming in here and scratching all of that surface that's going to come off. So I'm doing that now, and this is going to help speed this up tremendously. So I'm gonna go through all of my lines here. All right, so once you have scratched everything, now make sure you're not just like scratching a line in one section. You're, you're trying to scratch the entire open area there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just fluffing this stuff back down just to make sure everything's covered and we're gonna continue to let it set. All right, so now what I'm gonna do once again, I'm gonna set this aside and let it continue to do its job. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and get all my gloves for this project because I didn't want to dye my hands red. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now that my jar has almost completely cooled enough that I felt it was safe to go ahead and put on my granite um, to help cool it down. So what I've been doing is once it's set in one area for a little bit, I'll move it over and just keep on going. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to flip this over because I think it's ready to go. So the very first thing that we're gonna put in is that blood. And so I've got this ready, like I said, and we're gonna go ahead and use the syringe for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to fill this up here. All right. And then we're just going to take our jar here and go right inside of that little hole. So I'm just gonna line that up there. And I've got it tilted because having it tilted is gonna help that go ahead and go down. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do this process. I'm gonna go ahead and take a paper towel and rub off any excess so that way it don't go down the side. So if you get any of that, just stop, slow down, and then we'll keep on filling. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do one more of these. I made way too much mixture. So as you can see, a little does go a long way. So about a half of this medicine cup, maybe three quarters of the medicine cup would be more than enough. So you don't want this completely full of blood because you want it to be able to kind of work like a lava lamp. So we don't want a ton of it. But I think I did use about probably, because I went a little bit less. I want to say I used probably about half of it, half to three quarters. So now I've made sure I've, I've got all that off. So now once I've let, I left my lid off here once I put the baby oil because I got some air bubbles in there, they've released. So now I'm going to put my lid on. 
And we're, now we're gonna go ahead and fill the rest of the way with the baby oil. So with this one, I like it because it allows us, and you can see I'm getting that blood all over this. I should have pulled these off so I didn't make a mess, but that's okay. All right, so I'm having technical difficulties with this. Now, I will say I've used this in the past with the water and it worked completely fine, but some reason with the baby oil, this one is not working. I don't know if this one's just faulty or what it is, but we're gonna move on. I'm gonna move on with that medicine dauber because it's working perfectly. Now, you see that I've got blood on it. Who cares? It's fine. You know why? Because it's gonna mix in there anyways and separate itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish filling this up the rest of the way with the baby oil. All right, so as you guys can see, we are filling up that last little bit. So like you guys have seen, I had to end up using the medicine dauber because for some weird reason, this did not want to work for me. So I'm just finishing this up. It is almost there. And then what we're going to do is we'll wipe everything down. So you want to make sure when you're filling this, it is completely full. Now, the cool thing about doing this process compared to like a snow globe uh, tumbler with glitter and glue and all those things, we don't have to wait for the air bubbles to come out. So you just wanna make sure you fill this all the way up to that hole, and then we're gonna go ahead and seal it off. No, we don't have to wait overnight or anything like that. So that's what's really, really fun about this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is before I pull these gloves off, I'm actually gonna take some paper towels and I'm really gonna clean this surface up. So let me go ahead and do that really quick. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of the, um, I'm gonna make sure there's no more oil all over this thing, especially this part with that UV resin to make sure we get a nice clean adhesion. You may even wanna take a little cloth here with some Dawn dish soap and just clean off that top. And so let's go ahead and get ready for our UV. I'm gonna attempt to spray this hole here with some rubbing alcohol just to see if I could get that bubble. There we go. I think that kind of helped a little bit. I got one, the one bubble down. And then using that alcohol, I'm gonna finish cleaning that surface. All right, so we're just gonna make sure that's nice and clean. And then we're gonna go ahead and take a glue dot here. You could honestly probably even get away with a teensy tiny piece of tape. And I'm going to just cover that hole. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, now that I've got that on there, we're gonna go ahead and work pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my station. So I actually have this little light like this and I'm gonna slide it underneath. So I'm gonna fill it with that UV resin. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm just gonna go right on top of that area there. And so you can go ahead and flood this and kind of let it, you know, work its way down to where it's gonna be even. So you could go ahead and fill up your entire bottom if you want to. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and make sure I go all the way around here. All right, so you just wanna make sure it's nice and level, super, super flat. So I'm just making sure everything looks good. All right, so now what we're gonna do, now that I know everything is level, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on for 90 seconds. And I'm gonna go ahead and let the UV light do its process. So the UV light is gonna cure that UV resin super, super fast. Now, another thing that you can use is epoxy. So um, I do believe it's Gorilla that makes, um, it looks like two syringes together. So you squeeze it out together, mix it up. You can use something like that pretty quickly. It's just gonna need to dry usually, I think a couple hours, even overnight, where UV resin is gonna work within minutes. All right, so we're almost done here. So we're gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tap it just to make sure. I think it still feels a little sticky. I'm double checking where that hole was as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go one more time for 90 seconds. Now, while this is going, I've got about 50 seconds on there. I'm gonna go over this guy one more time, just making sure everything is you know, scraped down and ready to um, wash off. So we're gonna do our last craft and then we're gonna wash this guy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and check it one more time. We're gonna scoot this out of our way and I'm gonna guarantee this is good to go. So we'll flip it over, make sure we're not leaking anything, filling, it's good. So now check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt it. Hopefully you guys can see. You guys see that coming down like a lava? It is so stinking cool. So you guys can see that there, it is just drooling down, it is amazing. So just like a lava lamp, hopefully you guys can really see that. So you're gonna be able to flip it over and then it's gonna go back and do its thing. 
And so you guys can see that if you want to shake it up a little bit, so that way you have more of the little dots instead of just the straight lines as well. So as you guys can see, it's so cool. It's like a lava lamp right now. I think I honestly put too much. You could probably get away with a quarter of a cup. Really, you just want that very top part and then the rest of it. So it'll separate itself out. And if you twist it, like I said, you'll kind of get those little dots happening, which is a ton of fun because it's mixing it in between um, the, the baby oil, if you will. And so you can really shake that up to kind of separate everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy back like this so it can keep doing its work. But in the meantime, it's gonna look something like this. Right now I know it's really full of the red, but it will calm down. So super, super cute. I'm gonna set it upside down so it can get ready again. Now, this guy is still over here baking. I've went over a little bit more. I'm gonna let it keep going. So let's go ahead and finish our last craft. For our last craft, we are going to be doing direct to film. So this is really cool hack. So we're actually using, if you guys are familiar with direct to film, let me slow it down a little bit. It's where you guys get those um, transfers that you can order and you're gonna put them on your t-shirt. So they have that, that white ink behind them and all of that, right? So it's actually on little clear sheets that look like this, right? So they are, let me show you down here really quick. So with this, hopefully you can see there's a glossy side and there's a matte side. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be printing on the matte side. Now I'm using my Sawgrass SG500 today. So I have found if I put this through the printer, it either spits it out or prints halfway on it. I have heard with the Epson, you can go into your printer settings and it works perfect. So you just change what substrate, which is this that you're using. So what my hack is, I actually take a piece of um, sublimation paper. You could definitely just use a piece of copy paper and we're actually going to tape this on here. I use just painter's tape. So what you need is the matte side up. So the gloss side against the paper, the matte side up, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and grab that tape here and we're going to put this on here. Now, another thing you're going to need is direct to film powder. I have all of these things linked down below. They've been selling out, so I have the links. You may have to check in and out. There's a few different brands you can purchase on Amazon, but this is direct to film powder. So normally with these, with direct to film, the machines cost like $20,000. They're expensive. So you can get some for thousands, $20,000. They're expensive. So you know the direct to garment where you put the t-shirt inside of the printer? That's what this is. But you're using sublimation. So it's really cool. What this does is it's going to allow us to print on 100% cotton. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that tape. I've just barely got it on the side with the... Um, with that frosted side. So I have just a tiny bit. You're gonna make sure your paper is lined up all the way. Make sure it's nice and lined up. Then you'll fold over that tape. All right, and then we're just gonna get it just like this. So you just wanna double check yourself, make sure everything's lined up. If you have anything overhanging like I have here, I'm gonna go ahead and take that off now. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna load this in our printer. So I've got my paper side up and I'm gonna have the tape side towards the printer so it can pull it through like this. So we're gonna open our printer. We're gonna put it in, paper side up, tape side in. We're gonna close it, we're gonna open, right? So now what I've done is I've sent that over to the printer to start printing it out. All right, so while that's printing out, we're gonna go ahead and prep. I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper, but you could definitely use copy paper. And then we're already gonna have our powder ready because you wanna do this while the inks are nice and wet. That's how this is gonna work here. And you're already gonna want your heat press ready to go too. So I've got it 385 for 40 seconds. And we're gonna be putting this on 100% cotton. So what we're doing today is we're sublimating on 100% cotton and we're technically creating our very own direct to film hack. So we're creating our very own transfers. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish printing this out and we're gonna get ready to go. All right, so here you go. Look at how cool this looks. It is amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it up here. So those inks are nice and wet. So we wanna work quickly. So what you're gonna do now is very carefully keep your hands off that ink, flip this over, grab your paper off just like that. Now I can see that I got a little bit of ink up here on a piece in the corner. I'm just gonna clip that right off. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that powder pretty quickly because our inks are wet. So we're gonna go like this. You can go ahead and just get one side going like this. And then we're just gonna scoot it on down, just like glitter. If you've ever glittered anything like this with, with glue or anything like that, it's gonna work in the same way. So just like that. So you guys can hopefully see that powder on there. I'm gonna flip it around so you guys can definitely check out our design. So you wanna keep your hands off of that powder. So definitely keep those paws off of that powder. So we don't wanna move that around. And then you're gonna take 
this powder right here and put it back in. This powder is going to last you a long, long time, especially if you're a crafter just doing shirts and stuff here and there. You're, you're probably never going to use all of this powder. So we're going to go ahead and set this out of the way now. We're going to move our transfer. Once again, I already have my heat press ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our t-shirt that's 100% cotton. And then we are going to go ahead and line this up. Now, I am putting this on a white one. I have tried it on a black tote, and it did not work. So you definitely still want to stick to the lighter garments. You can definitely do colored t-shirts, the lighter, just like you would do 50-50s, but you could do 100% cotton now. All right, so first thing we're going to do is pull out any sort of moisture, just like we normally would. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and get ready to place this. You want to let that cool back down because we don't have wiggle room. So this is just powder. So when you go down, you want it to set right where you're wanting it to go. So we're going to go ahead and look here and I think we are happy right there. So I'm going to set that down and then I'm going to go ahead and cover this with parchment. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take two pieces of tape here just to kind of help hold this guy down. We're going to take a piece of parchment. We're going to cover it again. And then there we go, 385 for 40 seconds. So I have tested this out for you guys. This materials that I'm using today are absolutely perfect. Not all direct to film is called pet film as well. It's not created equally. So make sure that it is geared for direct to film, direct to garment. If it is, you're good to go. Um, the powder, same thing. You wanna make sure that it is called direct to film powder or direct to garment powder. And once again, you're good to go. So I've done 385 for 40 seconds. I have found that is the golden number here for the Cricut Easy Press. Um, I think it would work just the same with your bigger heat presses. So the thing about this is you do not want to peel hot. So we're going to go ahead and move this out of the way. We are going to peel this not cold, but almost cold. So that very light, light warm. So what we're going to do to help speed this up, we're going to go ahead and get our mat out of the way. And I actually have a granite countertop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and just kind of rub a little bit just to help cool this guy down. So like I said, we don't want it all the way cold, but I can tell that that warm is really starting to be perfect. So I'm gonna flip it back over. You guys can see those colors from sublimation. And to test it, you're just gonna start to peel and you can see that transparent. You're gonna have a little bit of color you can see just like on the sublimation paper. But as you can see here, we are good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and peel and it is perfect. So what this is, like I said, this is basically a direct to film hack and what it feels like is heat transfer vinyl. It reminds me of Caesar Easy Weed, maybe even just a little bit of lighter. It does not feel like screen print or anything like that. It feels like HTV. It is so stinking cool. So where sublimation, you can't feel it, you can feel this, but we can do this on 100% cotton. So basically now you can create your own HTV if you want to, but with sublimation. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this one. And it came out so stinking cool. What a cute design. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get ready to wash off the last design. All right, so we are ready to wrap up the last craft. So we're gonna go ahead and wash this off. So what I've done here is I actually ended up having to take this inside of my house. Here in the studio, I keep it a little bit colder because I get so hot because of the lights that even after it's sitting here for an hour, it didn't go. So if you are struggling and you notice nothing's happening, it may be too cold. So especially this winter, we're probably going to struggle with these a little bit. So you may wanna try the tinfoil. You're just gonna cover it with tinfoil with this on, use your heat gun to heat it up, and that's gonna speed that process up as well. So like I said, night and day, I took this in the house where it was warmer, and boom, it was done. So you guys can see, I'm gonna bring it up. How funny is this? It looks like little bugs. So once you start scratching this around, that's what will happen. That just starts to kind of pull up, especially when you're working with the rubberized ones like I am today. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take that little sponge here, and we're just basically going to be wiping this off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of this. And when you leave it long enough, you can pretty much wipe this off. There's no scrubbing needed. Now what this white sponge is going to help us do is not have any scratches on that metal. So we're using something more abrasive like the Brillo pads that we've been using. This white sponge is going to help you um, avoid all of that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of that now, just wiping everything. So once you've wiped everything off, now we can go in and remove all that tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my gloves because I just wanted these for that um, chemical, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this quickly and we'll be right back. All right, so now that I have everything off like this, we're gonna go in with our sponge and I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly 
remove any of that excess. So you're gonna notice when you pull that off, you may notice some little stragglies left behind, but when you rub it with that sponge, you're gonna be able to clean everything up. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly finish rubbing off the excess. And there you guys have it, three trending crafts. So we have etched on a tumbler. We have created a lava lamp here, but one of my absolute favorites is the direct to film hack using sublimation. So it's also a sublimation hack to sublimate on 100% cotton. So if you've been wanting to learn how to sublimate on 100% cotton, you wanted some sort of hack, this is it for you. It's one of my favorites. I think it came out so good. And look at those colors, they are popping. So that is my favorite. I'm gonna show you guys one more time that etched tumbler and how cool that came out. It is so easy to do. But once again, if you're struggling, you may need to heat that area up, um, you know, using the heat gun or whatever to speed that process up. Use a hair dryer, something like that as well. Once again, if you guys are watching us during the premiere, this is the last chance to use that hashtag Halloween so we can choose a lucky winner of this Halloween bundle. Once again, if you're the lucky winner, you're gonna reach out to mel at designbundles.net. Let them know that you are the lucky winner of the Halloween bundle over on Crystal Ann's YouTube channel. Once again, if you wanna see more of me, make sure you guys are following our YouTube channel for design bundles because you're gonna see me over there almost every day. We go live every single Monday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time and then we also go live again at the end of the month on Wednesday around 10 a.m. Central Standard Time during the Duller Deal. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.